everyone and welcome back to Studio K. We are continuing season two of Paula's Kitchen over here on a beautiful sunny Sunday afternoon is when we're filming this and we are going to be making kind of a special and elegant Sunday dinner. Check out this apron. It was a gift from my dear pal Austin Tucker one of my youngest kitchen fans, just 20 years old over in California. He gave me this for Christmas. I'm so excited to wear it for the first time for you as we kick into March of 2021. So Austin also gave me this wonderful cookbook because as you know, I'm originally from Ohio and I've actually made something out of this cookbook before. I made a dessert earlier in this season. Today I'm going to make a chicken apricot, which is a stuffed chicken dish. It's from the Vernon Manor Hotel, the oldest operating hotel in Cincinnati, Ohio. We'll tell you more about the Vernon Manor as we go along. And I'm going to accompany the chicken with something from Austin's mom, Rachel. She gave me this in a little gift right after Christmas. It's an American Girl cookbook to encourage young people to begin to cook. And we're gonna make as a side dish, volcano potatoes out of this cookbook. So it's Tucker time in Paula's kitchen. Let's talk ingredients for the chicken. There are not a lot of them. It calls for boneless chicken breast. That's what we're going to start with. And we're actually going to pound the chicken. You get to watch me do that, oh boy. And the filling is going to be some chopped spinach and mozzarella cheese, cottage cheese, and then we're gonna make a little bit of a sauce with apricot preserves and ginger. And we're gonna start it on top of the stove with some olive oil, and then we're gonna put it in the oven to finish it off. Never made this, full disclosure, we're just exploring and discovering as we go along, and then we'll get our volcano potatoes as well. So looking forward to this Sunday dinner. Let's kick things off by turning on the oven to my favorite, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's get that preheating. Now, I need to pound a chicken breast, a total of four chicken breasts. Three of them I've already done. I'm gonna demonstrate pounding one of them. First of all, we're gonna put some plastic wrap down on our cutting board. We'll put our chicken breast down, uh, skin side down and then cover it with plastic wrap on the top, just saran wrap. And then the instructions are to pound it to a consistent thickness. I'm gonna go for a uh, three eighths, about a half inch thick, and try to match the three that I've already done. So work out your frustrations, pound away. Now let's talk the filling for our chicken. The base is going to be four ounces of frozen chopped spinach that I measured out. And then I'm going to add to that, but wait a minute, let me show you this wonderful wooden spoon. I love showing off gifts that I've received for the kitchen. This one is from Julia. Look at what it says. It's so adorable. Thank you, Julia. All right, moving on back to our filling. I need three quarter cup of shredded mozzarella. Then I'm also gonna add one third cup of cottage cheese. And then finally, just salt and pepper to taste. The recipe doesn't tell you how much, so I'm just going to eyeball that and stir all my filling together. That's all there is to it. I went ahead and separated my filling into four little piles to make it easier to fill up each chicken. So I grabbed a chicken breast and now I'm just going to use my fingers. I'm going to lift up this spinach mixture, flatten it a little bit, and then the instructions say to just simply fold the chicken over it. And that's pretty much it. Now, when I put it in the frying pan to sear, I'm going to put it um, seam side down so that it will sear and hold the filling inside. So super simple. I'm just gonna do the other three and then I'll just be right back. Let's talk the glaze. It basically has two ingredients a fresh piece of ginger root. We're gonna use a teaspoon of that minced fine and 
old favorite apricot preserves. So we need to get that started actually before we start the chicken. So let me get on that. I need to put one tablespoon of olive oil in a little saucepan. And then I need, as I said, a teaspoon of ginger. We're just going to sweat that for briefly about 30 seconds is what the recipe says. Fresh ginger. Dale and I both had to put our noses in that because it's not something I often have in the house and there's nothing like the wonderful smell of fresh ginger. Got a nice sizzle going on here. It says 30 seconds till it softens and then I need to add four ounces of the apricot preserves. So I already measured that out and I have that standing by right here. Drop that in. And we're going to use this as a baste on the chicken near the end of its baking time. Wow, ginger and apricot, that is an enticing aroma immediately. There we go. Stir that up. And my instructions say reduce heat to simmer and reserve for later use. So I'm going to simmer this on the back burner for a little while and I'm going to move on with my chicken. Okay, let's bring over an oven-proof skillet for our chicken. I need two tablespoons of oil this time. And I'm hoping this skillet is big enough to hold all four of those big fat chicken breasts with the filling. I'm going to put them um, as we said before, seam, seam side down and sear them on top of the stove and then they're going to go in the oven. Let me just swish this around, make sure we get a nice hot oil. Give that a stir again. All right. And here we go, seam side down. I had wrapped these in the wax paper just to kind of give them, here I'll show you in the overhead camera how that looks, to kind of give them some shape. Drop those in. One by one. They're holding together. Dale and I said off camera, we certainly hope that they don't, the stuffing doesn't fall out of them, but so far so good. I'm two for two. Ooh. I'll tell you what, this is going to be a huge meal. I don't know that either one of us could eat more than one of these. I think we're going to have leftovers. All right. Get those going for a little bit. Wow, that is a pan full of goodness. Let me wash my hands. I'll be right back with you. Well, this is a big success. We have been watching this sizzle and I think they're about ready to turn. Let me grab this fella in the middle. Oh, wow. they're awesome. I have a big splatter mess all over my new apron. Wow, what an amazing meal this is going to be. I feel like I'm sort of yelling above the sizzle, but that's okay. All right, this one in the middle kind of opened up, but the other ones didn't. So, this is ready to pop in my 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes or so. So, cameraman, come on over and let's drop this in. I'm gonna set a timer for about 15 minutes and then I'm gonna baste with my apricot ginger glaze at 15 minutes. Alrighty, let me set up for the volcano potatoes. I'm gonna be right back. 
Let's talk volcano potatoes. Again, this little recipe book really is meant to get young folks into cooking. So it's really simple and basic. I, what I did was just boil some red potatoes earlier and I'm just gonna mash those manually a little bit with my potato masher and then I'm gonna add some creamy items to them and I'm gonna use my electric mixer to finish. So. All right, I need two tablespoons of butter, and that's right here. Then I also need a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. I measured those out already. I need a half a cup of milk. Drop that in. And then the surprise ingredient, at least for me, is it calls for two egg yolks, which is unusual for mashed potatoes, but here we go, two egg yolks. And that is all that, okay? And then I am going to turn my mixer on and give this a whirl. I'll tell you what, those egg yolks certainly make these yellow. These are gonna be the yellowest mashed potatoes I ever had. Creamy and fluffy, I think those are done. Now, the next step is to make the volcanoes. So I just got a baking pan and I went ahead and sprayed it with Pam. And what I'm gonna do now is grab a wooden spoon that I have here. And I'm gonna make the mounds that are going to ultimately be my volcanoes. It calls for six of them, so I'm gonna make six little piles and then we'll shape them. And I imagine it's really the egg yolk that's going to allow them to stand once I put them in the oven. These are, I, I could see why this would be a charming recipe for kids because the end result is going to be fun. Let me build these up a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is poke once I make mounds out of them, I'm gonna poke a hole in the top of each volcano, and in the top you put a tablespoon of cheddar cheese. I need to grab my cheddar cheese, and then we're also gonna just sprinkle, it calls for paprika on the top, I don't have paprika, so I'm just gonna use seasoned salt because we love that. So be right back with my cheese topping. So I made, I used a scoop spoon to make little indentations in the top of my volcanoes. And then I grabbed some, just some simple uh, grated cheddar. And I'm gonna put a tablespoon of cheddar in each one of these little volcanoes. And I imagine they're going to maybe spill over. I guess we'll see. <laughs> the instructions say to put them in the oven until the top of the potatoes start to brown. And it doesn't even say a time, so I imagine this might be done you know, about the same time as our chicken. Okay, who doesn't love potatoes and cheddar cheese together? I'm already a big fan. All right, I just have some seasoned salt and I'm just gonna give that a little bit of a garnish. Just, oh, it looks just like the picture in the book. Look how cute that is. All right, wow, this should be a really nice accompaniment to the chicken. Alrighty, this too is going to go in the oven. I actually moved my chicken aside a little bit. And uh, so let's drop this in. I gotta make note of the time as well. And in go the volcanoes. Wow, that chicken is amazing looking. This is going to be a really elegant Sunday supper. I'm pretty darn excited. Okay, folks, be back for the basting with the apricot glaze in just a moment. 15 minutes or so have gone by, so I'm gonna pull the chicken out and I'm gonna baste it with my apricot glaze. Oh, this is heavy. <laughs> Wow, this is incredibly beautiful looking and smelling fabulous. So here's my glaze and I'm gonna drop a little bit onto each piece of chicken. I have plenty of it so I can be, I can be generous. 
Wow, this is going to be quite a culinary delight. So let me tell you a little bit about the Vernon Manor. I want to interrupt Paula here for a second just to say that the Vernon Manor, as mentioned in the cookbook, has since been closed and renovated into offices for the Cincinnati Children's Hospital. All right, back to Paula. It is just down the street from the University of Cincinnati in downtown Cincinnati. It's been around since the early 1900s, more than a century, and it has hosted dignitaries, from all over the world, presidents, movie stars, ballet stars, everybody you could think of. But it has one claim to fame that we find really intriguing. Are you ready for this? Its address is 400 Oak Street, Cincinnati, Ohio. What does that bring to mind? <laughs> Yes, it is actually the famous address from the movie Rain Man. It was supposed to be Kmart in the movie, but in fact, it's the Vernon Manor Hotel. Wonderful historic place and a little piece of movie trivia for you about the Vernon Manor. All right, back in the oven goes this guy for about another five minutes or so. And you're taking a peek at our potatoes. Those are so cute. I think everything's gonna be done at exactly the same time. So we'll be pulling all this out of the oven and we'll be plating up our Sunday dinner in just a few minutes. It's time for dinner. Let's see what we got going on in the oven. I grabbed another pot holder because I might need it. This might be a two-hander. Oh, this chicken is so beautiful look at that and then here's my potatoes as well the cheddar let me show you this in the overhead the cheddar has melted wow what a delicious looking dinner this is not to mention colorful and pretty i made a little side of some white uh, corn which we love so wow Let's plate this up and have some Sunday dinner. Smile, everybody. <laughs> Action. <laughs> Dale just said action cracked me up. We are at the dinner table on a Sunday afternoon and boy we earned this one did we not Mr. Dale? I'll tell you what this is an amazing pile of food right here. <laughs> it is. I cannot wait to cut into this piece of chicken filet and see what kind of goodness we have on the inside. I have to say presentation wise Three out of the four came out beautiful. I'm really pleased. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut mine so it gets to that so, camera there uh, on that guy. side. What a guy. Yeah, well done. I'll cut mine this way. I'm just going to cut mine and put a bite in my mouth. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like. Oh, look at that. Can you catch? Are you catching that on the camera there, guys? It's fabulous. Is it? Oh. The apricot and ginger is a total surprise. Wow. That spinach filling is oh, wonderful. Wow. Oh, what a wonderful surprise. Big thumbs up, Vernon Manor. Oh, wow, that's really good. That is really good. I have to have a bite of this potato yeah. now. The volcano the potato. The volcano potato, they courtesy look, of Rachel. They look great. Wow, those are oh, great. Oh, wow. <laughs> Different. Totally different. They're not a mashed potato at all. No. Wow. Mmm. Wow. It's delicious. Very good. I will eat this whole pile. That's a guarantee. <laughs> Very good. Oh my goodness. What what a wonderful Sunday dinner. I'm I'm jazzed about how this turned out. We showed you the books. This is the book. Let me grab it and see here. This is the book that Austin gave us, or gave Paula, and she's made two recipes out of this. Um, 
Austin is just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful guy, isn't he? He's a very talented artist. In fact, he gave us a signed poster we're going to show you right now because we have it hanging in Dale's office slash studio. We love it. Yeah, I'll let you see that right now. He's very, very talented. He has a website, and uh, I'll have to put it down. And he I has don't... a Redbubble store, too. We'll he, put that in the yeah, description box. Too. And, of course, Rachel and the American Girl store, uh, uh, she really is a big promoter of American Girls. Yeah, and we've told you about her before. She has a wonderful active Instagram account where she takes her dolls everywhere she goes and photographs them in amazing locations. Right. AG on the go. All right, the Tucker family. Tucker time. I love the apron. Me too. Thank you, Big Austin. Big thumbs up. I, I christened it. It's got some grease on it. It's all good. <laughs> if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Anything else, Paula? Yes, this actually concludes season two of Paula's Kitchen. We are at number 12. We did 12 for season one. Right. We did 12 for season two, plus those bonus ones we did at Christmas time. Um, so the next time you see Paula's Kitchen for season three, it will be in a new location. Yeah, and it's going to be uh, different. Totally yes, different. <laughs> it'll be Paula's new kitchen for season three. Camera angles to be discovered. <laughs> All right, I hope you had a good time. See you next time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish eating. Now i got to eat this. This looks just too good. I'm letting it sit here. It's not we right. Both, we're yeah. talking to you. What's no, up with that? we're just talking to you guys. All right, we'll, we'll see you later. Bye, everyone.